Well, there we are, of course. That music means that it is time for Tice's Sunday Sermon. Always a bit different. And as part of my New Year's resolutions, I thought that this year I wanted to try and be de absolutely determined. You might be surprised by this. To be a bit bolder. Yes, sometimes we've got to debate the undebatable. We've got to think the unthinkable. Always, of course, in a respectful way and always looking at the data and I just touched on that about some of the climate change data uh, which we'll be looking at in the first hour because I think it's really important that we have the courage to talk about the things that some people don't want us to talk about and sometimes that means we've got to take on some of the vested interests because you know what there's nothing worse, we all make mistakes, but there's nothing worse than being ripped off, than being legged over, done in, completely done in by vested interests, particularly when it's a sort of a monopoly or a duopoly. So I'll be talking about that sort of thing in the coming months. I'm just determined to dig in a bit on some of this stuff. Because when things are done to all of us as consumers, as British taxpayers, when we've got no choice, when those of us that strive and that go to work, and yet essentially we're penalised for it. We're essentially penalised for doing the right thing. So I think actually that occasionally we've really got to take on the establishment. We've got to challenge that status quo. We've got to ask, for example, Keir Starmer, why on earth are you going to Davos, to the World Economic Forum. Utterly extraordinary. Someone who claims to be on the side of the people, and yet actually he's going over to hobnob with the unelected, the unaccountable, the globalists. We've got to challenge that, that consensus establishment thinking. And sometimes we've got to challenge other parts of the media and hold them to account. Why aren't they asking important, crucial questions of the day, of the week, of the year? Because it's only by asking the difficult questions that in a true democracy, a transparent democracy, we try and get to the right answers and we avoid the nonsense, mad, sort of conspiracy theories that abound all over the place. And we'll talk about some of that a bit later today. Because surely, we only actually get better as a group of people, as a country, if we keep learning. But to learn lessons, you've got to ask the difficult questions. And preferably when you learn the lesson, try not to make the same mistake again. And that's why I'm going to be running a segment in most weeks of my show in the early part of the year called Lockdown Lessons. Because I think it's really, really important. Because if we want as a nation to be at the top of the Premier League in terms of quality, in terms of performance, then we've got to get better and better. And it's quite clear at the moment, frankly, we're in the relegation zone of the Premier League. We might think we're the fifth or sixth biggest economy in the world, but in terms of the way the country is not working, we're clearly in the relegation zone. And we should be ambitious, but we've got to consider always, what are the consequences, what are the unintended consequences of some of the decisions that are made, taken on our behalf? For example, on the issue of climate change. Yes, the world is warming, but where's the context of it? How does you relate that to what's gone on in thousands of years gone by? And I'm going to be having a regular week, climate sanity, Try to question and challenge and test. Because, for example, on net zero, to many people, it sounds logical. It may sound sensible. But if the consequence of the government's decisions to reduce emissions in the way that they decide to do it, if the consequence of that is that it's making us all poorer and colder and energy prices higher and higher, then you have to say, well, hang on, is there another way? 
And then you have to take on the vested interests who say, oh no. And then of course they try and smear you because they're making so much money and it all comes down to the money. And that's why we've got to test it. We've got to challenge it. The vested interests. That's why also, for example, we know, we're hearing recently, every week, there are hundreds of excess deaths across the UK, which, by the way, is happening in other countries too. And it's likely to go on and on. But there's very little debate and discussion about this. What's causing it? And we've got to look at that. And we'll start to look at some of that today. Because we need to know. I mean, if you think back to March 2020, when there were excess deaths going on then, there were daily press conferences. There's hardly a whisper now. Is it the ambulance blockages? Is it the A&E waits? Whatever. There's a whole bunch of stuff. We've got to look at it. And then we've got to look at the impact of the different types of COVID treatments. What are the consequences? What's the data showing us as time moves on? What are the unintended consequences? And you look at the lockdown lessons across the whole piece, the impact on children, the question of masks, of course, which is a debate that is resurging again as people are starting to be told to wear them in certain situations. And that's where, again, we've got to test the media performance. Follow the data. The government inquiry into the COVID pandemic and how it's done, well, they've really only just started. Now, I'm going to keep a good eye on it, but frankly, I think I may learn as much in my lockdown lessons, because I fear that the government inquiry will take years, not weeks, not months, it'll take years. And I fear there could be a bit of a whitewash. And I'll have regular guests commentating on that. Because the truth is, of course, there are some huge vested interests that have got reputations to protect. And we know what that means. They won't want the honest truth, some of the difficult, hard realities to truly emerge. And I worry that there's way too much complacency in Westminster with the politicians and with civil servants. The view that the UK knows best, Westminster knows best, the civil servants knows best. We don't need to look at the international comparisons. Well, let's just start by looking briefly at Sweden, shall we, in my Sunday sermon. Sweden, they set up their COVID inquiry, get this, they set up their inquiry in June 2020 to run alongside the pandemic. They knew they wanted to learn the lessons, they knew they'll get some things right and some things wrong, but they got on with it. So guess what? They actually reported on their COVID inquiry in Sweden back in February last year, February 2022, an 800-page report. The UK hadn't even set the terms of reference for our inquiry, let alone appoint a chair, let alone appoint a panel or find somewhere to hold the inquiry. Can you believe that? And what does the data now show us? The data shows us that Sweden, between March 2020 and June 2022, had the lowest excess deaths of almost any nation across the whole of Europe. Do you remember the smearing, the slagging off they got in the mainstream media? Do you remember that? Anybody that wanted to talk about Sweden would have derided, derided as lunatics, nutters, insane. And yet that's what the data is now showing. And there's another country that's already finished their inquiry. We've barely started ours. And I think ours will go on for years. I fear it'll be like the bloody Sunday inquiry in Northern Ireland. Years and years. Some of the people involved will have long gone. Tens, if not hundreds of millions of pounds later. Frankly, by the time it reports, we'll probably be into the next pandemic. It's really important to understand this stuff. Because Sweden, without question, they've finished their inquiry. They've already learnt the lessons. And sure, they got some stuff wrong, as did we. But at least they've had the decency and the honesty and the transparency to get on with it to report on it and to start putting in place the measures. Sweden's excess deaths 
per 1,000 of population out of interest is about a third of the UK's, a third, in that period, March 2020 to June 2022. Just think about that. When you think about what alternative approach they did to lockdowns, they didn't shut their schools under the age of 16. They didn't shut down the whole economy. They didn't rack up hundreds of millions of debt like we did. They took a different decision. They were seriously brave. They took some massive flack for their decisions, but they tweaked it and they made mistakes. But goodness me, they got it a whole lot better off than we did. So I think we have to have that courage to look around and to say, right, what's working? What did we get right in the lockdown? What did we get wrong? What is the data now showing us with regards to children? What's the data showed with regard to mask? What's the data showing about the impact of vaccines? The antivirals, for example, which again is a different type of treatment. And different treatments will emerge as COVID goes on and on. Who knows what's going on in China? Who knows what variants will come down the track? So you've got to keep looking at the data and saying, right, this works, this doesn't work. So that in summary is what I'm going to try and do. Now, some of you might say I'm not being bold enough. But I'm going to be bolder. I'm going to be more ambitious. And above all, I think it's right, not just to whinge and cart from the sidelines, but always to try and put forward alternative solutions. And that's what I always try and do. When everybody, whenever in the world of business, when people came to me when I was running businesses, I said, don't just bring me the problem. Bring me your recommended solution. And that's what I always try to do. And with that, this Sunday morning, here ended my Sunday sermon.